Please stand. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. We brought nothing into this world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother, Romario Marquez, for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, remember before you this day, our oh brother, and we thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we are united with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We will now have the eulogy by Alison Seeley and Sakaria Warren. Good evening, everyone. I'm not Alison Seeley, however. I'm Sharon Bennett and I'm here to pay tribute to our dear Romario on behalf of the Chaloner School. Our dear own Romario Marquez Alonzo Waldron was affectionately known to us at the Chaloner Creative Arts and Training Center as Mario. Now Mario entered into this life on a very special day being December 25th, 2006. And sadly, he was called home on May the 5th 2023 at the age of 16. It was no secret. Mario was diagnosed with Down syndrome and he also had a heart condition. Entering the Challoner School at the age of five years, 
Mario was a bouncy and happy student who would run around and have fun with all the other students. Through the years, his condition became a concern. Mario was then restricted in his moving around and had to be assisted up to the stage of being wheelchair bound. Now Mario would have passed through four classes, teach, multiple exceptionalities, progressive, and the rehab department, which was his final class before his passing. Mario did well in his academics through his time with us. He understood many of the concepts not freely express himself all the time. Mario was a loving student with a great sense of humor, and I am sure he brought joy to all our classrooms. He was determined and had a mind of his own. Once made up, you couldn't change that for anything. When Mario wasn't interested, you would just see him close his eyes whilst pretending to sleep, hear him burst out in laughter, or receive the biggest blank stare you could ever imagine. Mario loved making fun at others. He would mimic many actions or what was being said. He had a way of pouting his little mouth when being rude, but it was always funny when done. Once Mario knew he did something wrong, he would always try to run away. However, we knew that little run was just a few quick steps, a squint of his eyes, and a loud giggle with a babble following. Mario's giggle was somewhat infectious. We would all end up laughing after he thought he had won. Now Mario loved art and all things beautiful with a special appreciation for beautiful flowers and not forgetting the ladies. We all love his beautiful smile. He loved Elmo and Dora, and we always enjoyed his singing when songs were played. Now, Mario wasn't much of a talker, but rather an observer who preferred to play on his own or next to his friends. Your interferences will be at your own risk. He also loved cars, trucks, and kicking a ball. Mario had a special kind of love for animals, especially dogs, even though he was afraid of them. That's why it was a special kind of love. How could I have missed this out? Mario loved to eat. That boy had an appetite. When watching him eat his meals, one would ponder, where all this food going? Yes, in his mouth, of course, to cater for all the chat which he gave to us. One fond memory of him to mention was on one of our walks over to the shower of gold flower vine where he was asked to pose for his photo to be taken. Now at that moment, Mario held on to the flower. He closed his eyes and he placed the flower up to his nose as if it was the most beautiful flower he had ever seen or smelt. And he just waited for his photo to be taken. He was truly a lover of all things beautiful. Mario, you were loved and is still loved by us all, and we are honored to have been a part of your journey. Finally, allow me to share briefly. The name Romario is of Latin origin, and it means Pilgrim of Rome. As, Mar as Romario journeys on his pilgrimage, let us remember the following adjectives which are befitting to him. Regal, observant, majestic, affectionate, rare, intelligent, original. That's our Romario. May the angels help you to find the most beautiful garden in heaven. On behalf of the Board of Management and the entire staff, of the Chalana Creative Arts and Training Center, we extend our deepest condolences to the family and friends of our beloved Romario. May he rest in peace and fly with the angels. Thank you. Please remain seated while we have a tribute by Ingrid 
Amy. Like a comet blazing across the evening sky, gone to soon. Like a rainbow fading in the twinkling of an eye, gone to soon. Shiny and sparkling and spindly bright Was it one day, gone one night Like the loss of the sunlight on a cloudy afternoon Go to soon like a candle built upon the sandy beach. Gone to soon like a perfect flower that is just beyond your reach. He's gone to sue. Born to a muse. He inspired his delight. He was here one day. He's gone one night. Like a sunset. Dying with the rising of the moon, gone to sue. He's gone to sue. Rest in peace, my Mario. We will now stand and sing the hymn to God be the glory.
let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose Son, our Savior, took little children into his arms and blessed them, receive, we pray, this your child, Romario, in your never-failing care and love. Comfort all who loved him here on earth, and bring us all to your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit. We will now have the first scripture reading by Anne-Marie Gollop. Good evening. The reading is taken from Revelation 21, chapter two, sorry, chapter 21, verse two to seven. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like bright, beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is not among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. He also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Here end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We will now have the eulogy. Good day, everyone. My name is Shakira, and I'm Romario's cousin. On behalf of my family, I would like to begin by thanking everyone that has attended today and those who sent flowers, prayers, or words of encouragement. Your condolences are truly appreciated. Romario was born on December 25, 2006. A Christmas blessing to Clemencia Gallup and Clovin Walren. What a joy that was as having a Christmas baby brings wonder and excitement to all. Romario had a few nicknames growing up. He was Mama, Fan Man, Mario, and Elmo. Oh, how he loved to watch Elmo. When Elmo was on, you were sure to see Mama there and a friend. Mama loved, loved to eat. He would eat his, mine, and yours too, if need be. His mom recalls a time when she had cooked and served food. Mama ate off all of his fast and in a hurry. His brother, Klimar, was going to eat his and turned and asked Mama if he wanted some of his, with which he shut his head and responded, yes. Klimar placed the food in front of him, left to go to the bedroom, and upon returning a few seconds later, remember, a few seconds later, his <laughs> plate was empty and clean too. <laughs> Klimar told him, boy, you eat all my food? Mama just laughed at him. He loved his toy animals and would often sit at the table and engage in play with them. 
One thing about Romario as well, he loved to play up in your ear. If you are near his hand, what's in your ear? There was a time recalled by his mother that his brother Shaquan kept harassing him until Mamar could not take it anymore and he started to share bear blows so much that their mother had to say to him, cool it down, tiger. Another time she went to lash his sister Shari Ashanta, but Romario took it upon himself to hold on to that belt and would not let go, <laughs> which would be an indication to the mother, do not hate my sister. Every time I saw Romario, I would be greeted with a hug and kiss. Then he would close one eye and point his finger at me and laugh continuously. Wonder what he was laughing at, but that was within. He was a very peaceful child and joy to be around. Despite his challenges, he never let him get him down. We captured many wonderful moments with him, most of them in terms of laughter and wonder. He was a truly amazing child and a blessing to all who knew him. Thank you, Mama, for all your memories we now hold dear to our hearts. And we will never ever forget you. We will surely miss you. We will forever love you, R.P. Elmo. Thank you. Please remain seated while we chant 20, Psalm 23, the Quran version. Psalm 23. Second scripture reading by Joyce Burke. Good evening, everyone. A reading from the Word of God, written in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, reading from verse 13 through to 15.
Then the little children, then little children were being brought to him in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them, but Jesus said, "Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs." As he lays, as he laid his hands on them and went on his way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now stand and sing the hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please sit. Some words from the second verse of the first chapter of the letter to the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 2. 
May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. The early death of this special needs child, which brings us together this afternoon, as you can hear, wears heavily on many of us. Because his was a young life which brought joy to many, a joy that has now been cut short. His was a young life that in some ways was closely bound up with the life of the members of his family. Because Romario was a son, a brother, a grandson, a neighbor, and a friend. And therefore this afternoon, you and I are gathered here at this time for various reasons. We come first of all to pay tribute, to take time to remember a child who has touched lives in varying degrees. And we show our respect and we show our affection in these moments for a loving and a lovable child who has resided among us for a little while. A child who whatever else we may think was a child of God, loved by God, and created in the image of that God. A child for whom life was not easy, but a child who, although now claimed by death, will continue to be a part of the minds and the hearts of those who loved and cared for him. But we also gather here to express our feelings to those who most deeply mourn. And if there were any way we could take on some of their pain, there was any way we could take on some of their loss or their suffering, we would do so. And you know and I know that there are not many words adequate enough to express the depth of feelings that we may have. Because the death of a child is always hard to bear. What else can be done in a moment like this but to say to those who mourn the loss of this child. We are here with you. But more especially, you and I have come together to share our faith. And we look at each other in the midst of anguish and grief and say perhaps only by our silent presence, somehow our God can relieve this suffering. Somehow, God can ease this pain. Somehow, God in Christ can calm our troubled spirits. And somehow, God in Christ will receive Romario's life and make it God's own. But my friends, if we are honest with ourselves, we have to admit that we have also come to this place this afternoon to ask why. The why question must have been asked many times during the short life of this child, whether it was vocalized or whether it was simply in the hearts of persons. As human beings, that is quite a natural response. And we may be hoping desperately that there may be some answers provided for us in the readings from scripture which we have heard, we may be hoping that there is an answer provided for us in the prayers that will be uttered. And maybe we are even hoping that there will be an answer for us in what the preacher might have to say. But my friends, there are no easy answers to the question why. We can only join in the very human situation at the moment 
and ask my God, my God, why? Why was this child afflicted with this disability? And this question of agony comes from the very lips of Jesus the Christ on the cross when he cried out in the midst of his own suffering, asking his God a question. My God, we are asking, or we may be asking, why was this life of this child so short? My God, why was this child afflicted as he was? My God, why has this family been touched with grief and agony? My God, why do we have to go through these times of trial and tribulation? And therefore, we come together this afternoon needing desperately to reaffirm our faith in some manner or the other. We come this afternoon seeking a reaffirmation because there is nothing which tests our faith more deeply than the death of a young person. I am sure that you remember a man named Job. He is an Old Testament character whom we are told that everything, who had everything, and when suddenly his whole world began to fall apart. And Job too began to ask questions just as we do. Job wanted to know why all this was happening to him. And the writer of that book tells us that three of Job's friends came to counsel him. And with their pious and mistaken theology, they tried to convince him that everything that was happening to him was exactly what he deserved. But Job was not satisfied with their explanations. And eventually in the book of Job, we, we hear God quoted with the words which in effect says, I am God and you are not, so there, that is the way it is. You just have to accept it. But my friends, those words bring no satisfaction to me, and I'm sure that those words bring no satisfaction to you as well. You see, the God whom we love and the God whom we worship and the God who created us in God's image is not that kind of God, but rather God's response to Job's questions, God's response to our questions of why God's response comes to us in the person of Jesus the Christ. Because you see, we live in a world where sin and folly and ignorance lead to suffering and death. We're told in the Gospels that Jesus suffered and died unfairly because of human sin and human folly and human ignorance. And in Jesus' suffering and death, we discover that God enters into our suffering. And that God gives us courage and strength in the times when we are at our lowest. That we are not walking this journey of pain alone this afternoon. That God is walking out with us. What God is saying to us this afternoon in the midst of our pain and suffering is not, I am a God and you are not, so there you just have to accept it. No, what God is saying to us is, I am God and I am with you in this your hour of grief. If you allow me to come into your suffering, we can bring something good out of it. Already you have caught a glimpse of some of the good that has come about. The outpouring of love from family and friends at the passing of Romario. The drawing closer of your family and parents and children talking to each other in ways that they have probably never spoken to each other before. What I'm trying to say this afternoon is that God did not take Romario from you. The God I know. The God whom I love and the God whom I worship, the God who was made manifest in the person of Jesus the Christ, does not operate in that way. Rather, we need now to give Romario to God. And in this very act of offering him to God, God will begin to fill that empty void in your lives and to make something good out of his passing. What does faith say in a moment of such tremendous loss and such tremendous grief 
and such tremendous pain. Faith says to us, do not for a moment deny the burden of grief in this hour. It is good to grieve because it comes directly from your love for this special child. But at the same time, be assured that God makes God's greatest strength accessible to you at this time for meeting the grief that you are going through. It also says that life does not close with physical death any more than Christ's death and ministry ended at the cross for God raised his only son from the dead and God will raise us and our sons and daughters as well. This mysterious process we know as life does not surrender to darkness and death for the last word because God in Christ and God's incredible love are always somewhere in the middle of all the crises of life. My friends, the love which is causing that terrible ache in your hearts has its source in God's love. And that love, I venture to suggest, is adequate to help you bear your pain and bear your grief and bear your loss. The love that you feel for Romario is what causes your pain. And that love will help you to bear your pain. The Apostle Paul puts it this way. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us also, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, O oh Lord. I trust that you, as his family, can take comfort from these words. For no matter what you are feeling now, you are not alone. God is with you. And God has brought you to this point, And God will take you through from this point. To those of you who mourn the loss of this child, I extend my condolences. And together we pray that rest eternal may be granted unto him and that light perpetual may forever shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. After each petition, your response is, hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your children, people together in one communion. In the mystical body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth, your light and your peace. Hear us, Lord. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and the gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. 
Hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Please stand for the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of humankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, glory forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Let us commend our brother Romario to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Romario, Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Romario. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. During the singing of the next hymn, a collection will be taken towards the organ fund of the parish in memory of Romario. The hymn, Jesus Wants Me for a Sunbeam.
Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom I prepared for you. Into paradise, May the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem.
Now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the records of their deeds. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Ensure in certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our brother Romario, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear life and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother Romario, and we ourselves, may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have the strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord. And that light of that shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercies of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen.
and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit.
let us pray. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon him and give him his peace. This day and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire and in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as In the goodness of God yeah. Cause all my life you have been faithful Oh yes you have And all my life you have been so, so good every breath that I am made Goodness of God. Your 
Say it. 